In this video, we're going to take a look at the degree of control point curves. Um, we're going to look at how to determine how many degree your curve needs to be to create the shape that you're after and basically what it means. What I don't want to do is dive into a heavy mathematical discussion on it. This is more just for the artist to understand what they're using and which degree their curves are. So if we do a control point curve and we come up here, let's snap to the grid, and we're going to create two points. So how do we know how many degree this curve is? Well, the way you figure out the degree is you have your starting point plus whatever the degree is. So in this case, it's a degree one. So we have our starting point and then we have one end point. If we move this end point around, you're going to notice that it's just a line. There's no curvature to this at all. If we go to a degree two, which would have three points, and then we move the center point up, now you can see that we have curvature. So now we're going to go to a degree three, which will have four points. And the same thing, we can move this up and you can see that this has more curvature. So essentially, the degree is going to tell you what kind of shapes you can create. So now let's do another one. This time we're going to add five points for a degree four. Let's move that up. So this one has seven points, so it's a degree six. We can do the same thing here. We can move this one around. Now what you can see here immediately is that we definitely have more control for curvature. So one thing that you might say is, well, if adding more points gives me more control over curvature, I'll just add a bunch of points to create all my surfaces. Well, you don't want to do that. And the reason you don't want to do that is you end up with kinks and lumps in your surface. They won't be really smooth. You only want to use the degree curve that you need to create that particular surface. Now, one thing that plasticity, plasticity does not currently have is a curvature comb visualization tool. I hope that Nick Allen can add this soon um, because you really do need it. So for right now, I'm going to export these out and we're going to take a look at them in ZW3D so that I can show you what the curvature combs look like. So here we are in ZW3D and I'm going to turn on the curvature comb for each one of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to dial the scale back just a little bit. Okay, so now taking a look at these curvature combs, how do you read a curvature comb? Well, these little blue spikes that stick up is the amount of curvature at that point on your curve. We can see how smooth they are up here on a lower degree. Also, we can also see that on our degree one, there's no curvature at all. And you'll notice you can't even turn it on because there, there is no curvature. It's just a straight line. So one of the things that you're looking for is to keep that curve smooth across the entire surface of the curve. What you don't want is you don't want things where it inflects, where inflection point would be where it crosses over to the other side like this. You can have that, but what you have to be careful of is how smooth that curve is in that inflection point, and then also the surfaces that are connecting at that inflection point. We'll cover that in another video. It's a little more advanced for this one. But 
one thing that we want to look at is let's look at the zebra stripe tool inside of here so that we can take a look and see what that looks like on each one of these curves. So now that we have the zebra stripes applied to each one of these surfaces from these curves, um, we can take a look and we can see what we have. So you'll notice that these are nice and uniform. There's no kinks in the surface. Nothing's crazy. Everything looks pretty good. Obviously, as the degree increases, you're going to see more of these zebra stripes. But another thing you're going to notice, too, is the thickness of that zebra stripe. So if we keep looking down here where we had our inflection point, you'll notice that you have this spike in your zebra. That's why you have to be careful, because right there, the curvature is very, very tight. So one of the things that this affects big time is fillets. Um, usually, if you're doing surfacing, you won't use fillets. You'll use blends instead. But because people are coming from a polygon background to plasticity from the artist side of things, um, they're going to jump right to a fillet and it's going to cause problems. And I will show that in another video. But just know that you're going to have issues with stuff like this. And you really want to keep it as simple as possible. So if you can get away with a degree two or a degree three, then I would definitely advise you to do that first. So now let's jump back into plasticity. So how do we know what degree curve to use to create something? So I'm going to do this back casing on this gun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use as few points as possible. One there and say one there. Now what I can do is I can test this. So do I have enough points? Well, the easiest way to find out if you have enough points is start moving this around. You want it to match the shape that you're trying to create. So in this case, I want it to be somewhere about right there. So you can see in this case, I was able to create the shape that I want. So I don't really need a higher degree curve than what I have right now. Since there's three points, it's a degree two, and this will work just fine. But what if we want to use more? We're just going to throw a bunch of them in there. So if we do the same thing, but we use a bunch of points this time, We can see here that everything looks good. Well, let's export this out and let's check it in ZW and see what we end up having. So let's select both of these curves and let's extrude them. And let's see what they give us. So the one on the right is the degree two. And the one on the left is the one with the crazy amount of points. So. If we go up here to analyze the faces, you can already tell which one has more points. And you can tell this by the banding. So at first, both of them look okay. You can't really see any flaws in the surface based on the zebra stripe. So let's take a look at each one of these curvature combs. Now what you can see, let's go ahead and hide these two faces. Now what you can see is a different story. So here, this is still fairly smooth going all the way over, but here you can see that it dips down, comes up over and over again. So the curvature comb shows us that this curve is not a very good curve. And it's another reason why I had said that you want to be very careful by putting too many points in. Now, one of the things that's probably hard to see, but what happens is if you look here on the zebra stripe analysis, this band gets thick right here. And then it thins out and it gets thick again back here. 
So that thinning and thickening that you see across there is not good. The problem with the zebra analysis is it's really hard to see that in some cases. Sometimes it's blatantly obvious and then other times it's not. Over here you can see though everything is pretty uniform. There's no uh, wiggling in any of the zebra lines. Everything looks pretty good. But see, you can see here, this is actually a good example at this angle. You can see what it does right here. You have that slight wobble in the line where you do not have it here. Everything is really nice and smooth and curved down here. But you look up here and you can see that wobble in the line. So there are ways to see it with the zebra, but it's just difficult. It'd be a lot easier if we just had a curvature clone tool to check it out. So anyway, I hope that this video showed you what the degree differences are and when you should use which. Um, if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.